Well, Paul, we've got five minutes, a cup of coffee. Welcome, cup of coffee. Yeah, let's, uh, let's have a look at when and where to fish. A, a, a lot of people get it wrong because they're too keen to get a rod in the water, to get a bait in the water, so they go out the car park. They can only go at weekends because they've got work in the middle of the week and they're a little bit restricted. Now, as we know, with a lot of thought and a bit of effort, you can find a place where there's fish. Yeah, just sit down, five minutes, plan it, can all add to a, a successful session. That's right, yeah. yeah. I mean, the ways to find out where the fish are, they're varied. You can, you can look on the internet, you can read Sea Angler magazine. You can read your local paper angling reports. You can phone up the local club. You can try the tackle dealer. The tackle dealer might exaggerate things a bit though, so be careful. Now, what would you say if you had, you had to say one thing was most important to, to decide when you're fishing? What, what is most important, you think? Well, my handiest item has to be my tide book. Yep. Plan my sessions. You can plan in advance, because tide books, they come monthly, they give you all the tides of every day of a certain month, you can plan your, plan your days in advance. Yeah, so, so we're looking at a tide table and the, the tides come in fortnightly cycles. You've got a spring tide every fortnight, which is the strongest, most powerful tides. And then you've got a neap tide every fortnight in between the spring tides, which is the weakest tides. The tides are caused by the gravitational pull of the sun and the moon. When they're together, when the, both the sun and moon have got gravity pulling, the sea really moves and that's the spring tides. Now, we generally reckon the spring tides are best for fishing, aren't they, in the yeah. sea? Don't matter yeah. where you go, around the country, there are a few exceptions, but by majority, the spring tides are best. Without a shadow of a doubt, Alan. I mean, uh, even low water venues, high water venues, you know, um, you can choose your venues to an absolute maximum with a yep. spring tide. That's right. You've got to be aware, some spring tide venues, the tide is too strong to fish. So you want to go a couple of tides back from the spring, a, a mid neaps even some on some venues. The other thing about tides is that spring tides, the tide comes in the furthest, but it goes out the furthest as well. So they're good for bait digging. Well, we'll get onto that later in the film. What 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 else is there? I mean, I think for the novice, the best time to fish is in darkness, without a shadow of a doubt. You don't have to cast far in That's dark. Right. The fish come closer to the beach. They're, they're reachable by almost anybody. That's it, yeah. I mean, darkness is a big advantage. You can get, I mean, it takes a bit of getting used to when you've not done a lot of night fishing, getting used to having a headlamp on or good idea, go on the local pier or promenade where there's a few street lights to learn. Because yeah. a lot of anglers have trouble casting, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they have dark. trouble casting, yeah. They don't know where the lead's going or where That's the bait's right. going, yeah, yeah. So it's practice. But that, they are the, the spring tides and darkness are the two top times to fish. Now what about venues? We've got lots of venues around the UK. We've got beaches, we've got promenades, we've got piers, we've got cliffs, we've got rocks. What, what, I mean, most people like the beach, don't they? Yeah, lots of people like the beach. And if there was one word of advice that we could give anybody is have a look, if you plan to fish a venue over high water, is have a look at it over low water. Have yep. a look at what you're fishing over. Yep. Look for a feature. You know, if, if you've got a sandbank or a few patches of rocks, look, look for somewhere where you think a fish is going to feed or hide away or you know yeah. they, they like a lot of cover fish like a lot of cover the other thing is of course rough ground you're going to lose a bit of tackle yeah. and if you're a novice a lot of people don't like losing tackle but it's a fact we live in a uh, in england the, the fishing commercial fishing is very very strong it goes on everywhere and they catch a lot of fish and we're competing against them now there's one little tip there you'll find that there's more fish on rough ground than there is on say a sandy beach where it can be trawled if you can find a little rough outcrop where the trawlers can't get, quite often that can be yeah. better. You know, parts of Wales and Scotland and Northumberland and Scotland. There's little yeah. patches in your, your area up, up, up there, north. Yeah. Really, every kelp bed you'll get fish in it that are fairly safe. But you've got to be proficient at, and well, you've got to accept that you're going to lose tackle. If if you can be prepared to lose a bit of tackle, you know, um, the rewards will definitely come. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think. That's the next thing. We'll, we'll get on to tackle in a minute. Yeah. And we'll, we'll talk about the different terminal rigs and things and things you need and leads. That's what we. Yeah. 